you, you want me to leave school to join a beauty pageant? I feel like when you put a beauty queen and a politician in the room, if you mm. want to win, you have to want it. And I feel like it's almost like a Victoria's Secret show. Who do you think will take the Miss Universe Philippines crown? Hi, I'm Kai with Rain, Bria, Anna, and Gia, and you're watching G Talk. Will you marry me? The essence of a man is to take care of the woman he loves. I have the perfect marriage to follow. There is love attraction. Sir Gary, there's a show called G Talk and they, yep! Our guest for today is a Filipino German actress, TV host, model, and beauty pageant title holder. She represented the Philippines at the Miss World 2017 pageant, finished as a top 40 semi finalist, and won the Beauty with the Purpose Award. She started her career as a courtside reporter. She earned her Bachelor of Science in Psychology at the Ateneo de Manila University. Please welcome the beautiful Laura Lehman. Woo! <laughs> Hi guys, thanks Hi. for having me. Hi. So thank you for being on G-Talk, but it's time to get to know another side of you through our G-Talk's two minute fast talk, where we mention words or phrases in alphabetical order and you respond with the first word that comes to mind. That's 26 questions from A to Z. It's really fast paced and so there's no explanations necessary. Are you ready? Okay, I hope so. <laughs> okay, let's go. So we'll start off with A, assumptions about you. Snobbish and obsessed with beauty. Beauty pageant obsession. Just watching beauty pageants. C, something that makes you cringe. When people are rude to service staff. D, dancing queen. I think of Win Win Marquez, who was actually my batchmate when I joined Miss World. Your most embarrassing moment. Probably like in high school with a boy I like. F, your favorite thing to do on a rainy Sunday afternoon. Stay home with my husband and my dogs. G, Game of Crowns. A show I hosted. H, most memorable high school experience. Our senior uh, Boracay trip. I, I wouldn't be caught dead wearing. A crop top outside just because I'm so shy. J, what sparks joy? My dogs. K, your go-to karaoke song. We like Hilary Duff or Miley Cyrus and a bunch of those girls that I grew up with. L, most beautiful local celebrity. Liza Soberano. M, a celebrity you are mistaken for. Aubrey Miles sometimes. N, a childhood nickname that you didn't like. Lao Lao. O, old school or modernist? Old school. P, what did you buy with your first paycheck? Food. I feel like I was so little. Q, a drama queen moment. When I won Miss World Philippines. R, your most challenging roommate experience. Uh, when I was in college, I was in a triple. So there were three of us in one room that's meant for one person. S, note to your younger self. Let go and be open to new experiences. T, time travel. I wish I could. You, the most unusual gift you've ever received. Somebody gave me a scrapbook with pictures of myself. V, your vanity plate. Dog, just because I love dogs so much. W, a wise man once said that... If you think you're too small to make a difference, think about a mosquito in a room. X, your X factor is... Maybe my multicultural back background, I guess. Y, craziest thing you did for love. Move cities. Z, best way to friend zone someone. Talk about the guy you like in front of them. I would do the same thing. <laughs> Thanks for playing the game, but now it's time to dissect some of your responses. I want to know about that gift that someone gave you, the scrapbook. A fan had made it for me and handed it to me um, during my Miss World days. Super sweet, super touching. She printed out pictures and she drew on it and she wrote on it and everything like that. I think just from like a personal perspective, it's kind of weird when you see like, a book with pictures of yourself you know you get conscious yeah. about it and you don't understand like how someone could value you that much but then at the same time i guess you just you're just very appreciative of it but you know what like this, we are like obsessed with this beauty pageant why do you think we're obsessed with beauty pageants I remember when I was in the, in the States, actually, my roommates didn't know who their Miss USA was. So I don't think it's like as big a deal. But in the Philippines, it's I feel like when you put a beauty queen and a politician in the room, everyone's <laughs> just going to listen to the beauty queen. You know, we, we love shows. We love performances. We love watching people sing and dance. We love singing and dancing. And I feel like beauty pageants kind of incorporate all of that because there is a performance aspect to it. You know, you have these girls strutting their stuff on the runway you have a talent portion and I don't know I, I almost feel like it's 
a party or an escape maybe to be honest i came into it um not appreciating it that much because i kind of had grown up with a more western background where they don't see the value in beauty pageants but then when i actually joined it i kind of realized like oh this is such a great thing it's so different from what i had imagined and i'm so happy i did it it completely changed my life well i know someone who wants to be a beauty queen Rain. Oh my god. No. Oh my really? god. <laughs> really do you? Maybe. My mom always talks to me about it. She's 19 years old and she's five eight. Oh my 19, god. 19, 19 and five eight. Yeah. Yeah, you should. It's such a good experience. You said that you had an embarrassing moment. I feel like I've had so many embarrassing moments same especially <laughs> i know but most of the time it's just in our head right like we don't really realize that we're overthinking oh, but yeah. i don't know it's probably in high school i had a very very awkward first kiss with a boy i had a huge crush on and i remember i kissed him and i ran away so i didn't even oh, look at him we didn't no. even talk <laughs> after has anything so embarrassing awkward. happened to you during your pageants well, luckily, I didn't trip or fall when I was on stage competing. But what I do remember was there were stairs on our stage, like there often are in beauty pageants. And in the Philippines, like, you know, pageants can get pretty wild. So they get pretty creative with the stages and the decorations. Yeah. And I was able to walk down the stairs fine. But when I watched myself on TV, I realized my legs were like, like I was stepping like this, like open wide, and so, yeah, open wide instead of like being graceful and doing it how like a queen should do it. So that was pretty embarrassing. Laura, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Who do you think will take the Miss Universe Philippines crown? Oh my god! Oh my gosh! This is so so difficult. You know what's so what's so interesting and different about this year is that everything is entirely online. Right. So. The only thing we can base the girls upon is what we see on social media. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's like if you're a girl who has a good camp and team behind you and you have the means to release all these beautiful photos and beautiful videos, then you end up looking a lot more prepared and a lot better than a bunch of the other girls who don't have the same, I guess, means to release all that. So it's so hard to judge because you don't really know at the end of the day who's who's the best one just because you can't see them in person, you can't hear them and you can't feel their aura. But I don't know, there are so many strong contenders. I can name a few. I don't know if I can I can pick one. So for me, there's Mao Rabelwitz. She joined Asia's Next Top Model. And obviously, I think because of that experience, she's very well prepared. And then there's also... She was Miss Supranational USA, actually. She lives in the US. Yes, Katrina. So, Katrina. Yeah, Katrina. Katrina. She's very yeah. strong, I found. Um, there's Kisses Delavine. Um, she's a showbiz figure here and she's very well prepared. She's such a nice girl. And there's also another girl from Cebu named Steffi. She's mm -hmm. the one who did her runway walk on that on like the bridge that they're making in Cebu and the video went viral. So Ooh. I think as of now, from what I see, those four girls are pretty strong, but you never know. <laughs> Kisses. I think I've seen her She's on Pinoy Big Brother once. Yeah, she joined She joined Pinoy Big Brother and I met her once because I was hosting something for her. So I actually saw her in person and her aura is just very like, she's very light. Like she's such so a light, off. bright, so bright, bubbly person. <laughs> so Laura, do you have any advice for girls who want to join beauty pageants like Rain? <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to really want it if you want to win. You have to want it if you want to win. Because that's what I noticed about the girls who end up taking the crown home. Whether that's been Pia or Kylie or Megan. They're very, very determined women. They've done their research and they're so passionate about it. And I think that's what makes it stand out. Um, the first time I joined actually, when I joined Bini Bini Filipinas in 2014, I was fresh from the States. And I really had no idea about pageants. To be honest, I didn't even know what beanie beaning was i went into it completely blind and i knew when i met the other girls that i wasn't going to win at that time i just felt it i knew that i didn't deserve it like i wasn't my best self yet i didn't want it as much as they did so when i came back 
to join Miss World in 2017. That's when I told myself if I want to win, like you have your whole heart has to be into it. What made you want to start? I it was a complete random coincidence. I was back home in the Philippines and somebody had approached me during a dinner. So he spotted me, he approached me, he asked me if I wanted to join. And at the time I was like, What's beanie beanie? Like, you know what, you you want me to leave school to join a beauty pageant? Like, are you crazy? (laughs) So that was that was the first thing in my mind. And I think that year I was supposed to take a study abroad, but instead of studying abroad in in maybe Europe or somewhere else, I chose to just take that year to go back to the Philippines, to be with my family and to just reconnect with my with my roots. So yeah, I took that that opportunity to join and then I didn't really realize it would end up becoming a career for me. And I didn't realize how much I would love it. I really learned so much. I met girls from all different parts of the Philippines and I understood like beauty pageants here have so much dignity and the girls have so much respect for themselves. It's nothing at all what I thought it was. All the stereotypes I had about it, about the girls being ditzy, about them doing it, um, you know, for the fame or for the looks were completely thrown out the window. Like these girls were very determined and they wanted to represent their countries, like bring, bring pride to their families and just use it as a stepping stone also. So I think after I realized that, I was like, wow, this is such a cool thing. And yeah, I ended up staying. When it comes to uh, preparation, what do you think is the hardest to prepare for? Do you think it's the walk, the q and I guess it would depend on the girl. For me, I had a very, very hard time with the walk and just with the makeup and the the beauty side of it in general because, I again, I, I came from a background that was very was really not into beauty pageants i was studying to become a doctor at a t- at that time so you can oh imagine God. like all the people around me you know were not into that sort of stuff i also played fast pitch softball like i was i was more boyish i had never i had never worn makeup before i never even wore heels because i'm i'm so tall well not super tall but i mean when i was in high school i was taller than my prom date so there wasn't really a chance for me to wear heels. I'm I'm five eight, five nine. Lovely. I mean, tall for the Philippines. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess. So, how did you prepare for your walk? Did you have to wear heels while doing the treadmill? Do you have to wear heels while cooking, <laughs> doing the laundry? How did you do it? Yeah. Well, I, I was trained under Aces and Queens, and they really teach you how to prepare. I had I had Jonas Gafood coach me on how to walk which I felt very fortunate about. And I think just the more you're in heels, the more you get used to it. I was wearing heels so much that when I would get home and take it off, I felt naked almost <laughs> because there was some. It, something felt wrong about my body just because I wasn't wearing them anymore. So it's just all about practice and getting used to it, I guess, like with everything in life. Did you ever Did you like know? stumble? Like were you, were you yeah. in like four inch heels? There's actually videos of me falling over that hopefully will never see the light of day. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> my trainers have them. Yeah, it was definitely the worst one. I was also very young when I joined. I think I was 19, 19, 20, like you, Rain. <laughs> How long did it take to perfect that walk? I've definitely not perfected it until this day. I mean, during my Miss Road competition, right? I was stepping like this. <laughs> Oh so, but the the training time I had from when I first arrived in the Philippines to the beanie beating Filipinas competition was I arrived in December. I was scouted right after Christmas, and the screenings for beanie beating were like maybe the second week of January. So it was like a two week, three week period, and everything was just very rushed. So. But typically at Aces and Queens, how long do they um, train you guys for? Well, now the girls. Becoming very serious, you know, like the, the yeah. pageants from the past are so different from the pageants of today. It's almost like a science already. Yeah, it's definitely a science. The girls who I had joined with had most of them had been training maybe like six months prior to to I have. There were some girls also who had been there for more than a year. Um, they were waiting for the right time to join. I think a lot of the the process is that like it's so important to find a time in your life when you're ready because it does take up so much of your time. Like I remember um, we would be in Araneta Coliseum in the Bini Bini office maybe six. 
six six days a week and it's not you know like a nine to five job we're there until maybe like 3 a.m in the morning is sometimes fitting so you can see how you have to really want it because if you don't you simply won't survive in that sort of atmosphere and that scenario so you really do have to want it and you have to be very very dedicated about it because it is a science and there's so many girls who want it how so. many hours do you practice walking well to give you i guess an idea of the schedule we would have beanie beaning or miss world maybe a busy schedule from monday to saturday and aces and queens would always take our sunday to train so we would be in our trainer's house from maybe eight in the morning to about 2 p.m., 1 p.m. I'm um, just training and listening to their talks and practicing our walks. At the same time, you also kind of realize that your trainers dedicate their weekends to this. They dedicate their Sundays to this. They dedicate their homes to this. And they open their doors for you. And I think that's additional motivation because you see how much they want you to win. So mm -hmm. um, it motivates Personal, you to do even yeah. better. And they're not paid, by the way. We never paid them at all. They just love it. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. free training. Do you help in training the, the younger girls? I, I, I'm not the best trainer again because I'm not the best walker or the best performer. Um, but but sometimes well, it's important nowadays in beauty pageants, right? Like that's oh, thank the you. Well. That's the moment I look for. Is like, <laughs> what is she gonna say? I know, I know. Yeah, the top five question, and now there's like a top three question and everything. But no, we actually have um, in Aces and Queens we have set trainers for each segment of the pageant. So we have a trainer for walking. We have a trainer for stage presence. We have a personality trainer we have kind of like a i don't know how you you would call her but like a mama who's there for our emotional needs and then okay. yeah i know it's super sweet and then we have our q a trainer who's typically a lawyer mm -hmm. so he's the expert he knows what public speaking is all about and mm -hmm. then sometimes he'll call in the winners to give their feedback or to give advice to the girl so i guess we become more of speakers than trainers. One of the um, assumptions about you is that you were snobbish. Well, I hope they don't. And I think a lot of it is because I am a beauty queen. And I think when you're a beauty queen, people have just automatic assumptions about you, that you're vain, that you're doing this for the fame, that you're you're into beauty and you think you're above everyone else. So I guess it's more of that intimidating factor of being a beauty queen. Just because there's a stereotype against that or about being a beauty queen, um, maybe uh, people are kind of hesitant to approach me or don't expect me to be the way I am because in real life, you know, like I don't wear makeup every day and I don't wear heels every day and I love being at home with my dogs and that's the real me. Can you talk to us about beauty with a purpose because you won that award. What's nice about Miss World is that it's a little different from Miss Universe because Miss Universe I guess it's more of like a fun performance. Um, it's on a big bright stage, you have a swimsuit competition and I feel like it's almost like a Victoria's Secret show but with Miss World we actually don't have a swimsuit portion when we go to the actual Miss World competition. In the Philippines we do when you're competing for Miss World Philippines but I think that's just because we love everything pageants here um, so we like including that portion but in the actual Miss World that's handled by London there's no swimsuit competition so the focus is less on runway and um, performance and it's more based on the projects that you do during your reign um, and the different charity projects that you can contribute to your community so yeah that's what's nice about it and then you go to Miss World and you learn about all these different projects that all these different girls did so that's what the whole beauty with a purpose thing is about you're definitely a beauty with a purpose so thank you so much for being on Talk and sharing your stories with us thank you thank you guys for having me you once said you're not superwoman and that you can't change the world but if you do the little things you can make a difference uh, we love that you are using your voice to make lasting contributions to the lives of the sick and the disadvantaged. It's the heart of beauty competitions to be the change you want to see in the world. And we leave you with this quote by David Viscott. The purpose of life is to discover your gift. The work of life is to develop it. The meaning of life is to give your gift away. Thanks for watching.